So then let us begin. We give you thanks, O Lord, with our whole heart. We give you thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Lord, when we called, you answered us. You increased the strength of our soul. We will sing of the ways of the Lord. For God's steadfast love endures forever. Behold, now is the acceptable time, now, now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Let us pray. O God, you love to provide for your children. Make us ever eager to turn to you in prayer, trusting that you will hear us and will provide what we need. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. We'll sing all four verses of As the Deer Runs to the River. First reading is from the 18th chapter of Genesis, um, and for a little bit of context here, 
Um, this is the story of Abraham, of course. After God had made covenant with Abraham and he left the land of Ur and is on his way journeying, uh, we're going to start actually with verse 17. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do in Sodom? Seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nations, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. No, I have chosen him that he may charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring about for Abraham what was promised him. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? And we're missing some of the text. I've heard the story enough. Perhaps you will remember it as well. And so the Lord um, revealed to Abraham the plans that he had to destroy Sodom and, Gora, and Gomorrah for the sin of inhospitality. And Abraham was very concerned. And so he entered into a conversation, or shall we say a negotiation, with God and said, but Lord, if there are 35 righteous there, will you destroy the whole town and, and those 35, or will you save it? And the Lord said, um, I would save it. And then Abraham said, um, Lord, what about 25? And the Lord said, yeah, for 25, I would save it. And Abraham said, well, what about 15? And the Lord said, for 15, I would save it. Now, scripture doesn't tell us whether the Lord said, yes, for 15, I will save it. And then Abraham said, oh, Lord, let me be bold. For 10? And the Lord said, for 10, I will save it. And then Abraham said, and Lord, for 5, will you save it? And the Lord said, yes, for five, I will save it. And Abraham walked away. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138, together please. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. And our reading from the Sermon on the Mount today is from the seventh chapter. Again, words that are familiar to us. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? 
Or if the child asks for a fish, we'll give a snake. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Of course, this is all about prayer, isn't it? Now, I want to confess to you that um, prayer sometimes troubles me on any number of levels. I wonder why it is that God doesn't answer my prayers in the affirmative when I'm praying for good things. I wonder why God sometimes says no to me when I am asking for bread and he seemingly gives me a stone instead. Sometimes I wonder if God even hears. But then I'm drawn back into that marvelous story of Abraham. And what we see is that God did indeed hear and God did indeed answer. And it amazes me that it seems that Abraham changed God's mind. And that confounds me sometimes. But the real story, I think, found in, in that story of Abraham and his conversation with God, the real story is found in the relationship between Abraham and God. Their relationship was such that Abraham felt bold and empowered to go to the God of the universe and try to change his course of action. And God, in relationship with Abraham, listened. And there's no indication in scripture, um, in the original language or in the syntax or any place in the text, that God grew impatient with Abraham as I have grown when my children came back time after time. Well, mom, can't I stay out till 10 o'clock? No, I said 9.30. But mom, make that 9.15. But mom, make it 9 o'clock. God didn't do that. God was in relationship with Abraham, a perfect relationship. And so it is that when I think about my prayer life, and I hope when you think about yours, you think about it in terms of the relationship that we have with God and that God has with us. Not that we bring a wish list to God as we brought to Santa when we were young, but rather that we pray in trust, knowing that the God who hears us loves and cares for us and wants to do good for us. And of course, the good that God wants for us is the good that God knows. How many times haven't we prayed for something and we found out that what we were praying for was really not the best? It's those times that we look to God to lift us up to carry us, and to restore us. Praying in trust. Praying to the one who loves us. Praying to the one who created us for love. Praying to the one who breathed life into us. Praying in trust. My prayer is that your prayers these days of Lent will be prayers grounded in trust, knowing that the God of the universe hears and listens. Amen. We will sing the first three verses. Thank you. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest. Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, O oh Lord. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We are bold to pray as our Savior taught us using the words of the Sermon on the Mount. Our Father in heaven, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Amen. And now, my friends, may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.